He's got the toys. He's got showmanship. And he's got sex appeal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the great Southwest, here's the guru of gadgets, the dapper and dashing Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Gadget Professor. My name is Don Bain, and of course, I am the Gadget Professor. We are on show 128, and it is October 24th. I have to look down at my notes to make sure I got the right date. Well, obviously, we didn't make it into the studio today. It was pretty packed in there, and uh, I felt that it would probably be easier for everyone if I uh, try to get the Gadget Professor recorded out of my home studio. If you're new to the Gadget Professor, welcome. We are heard in 166 countries around the world, so I'm very proud of that, and I owe that all to you, so thank you so much for tuning in. If you are old to the Gadget Professor, welcome back. I think I have an interesting show for you today. Uh, we come out with a new episode every Thursday evening, as you all know. And uh, tonight, I do not have a gadget, but I have some interesting things that I think you should know about. I have a little rant uh, about a company that went out of business on me, and I'm not too happy, and I'm not sure what to do about it, but we'll, we'll figure that out in a second or two. And then we have some interesting tips, I hope, for you on uh, how to keep that smartphone safe. There's a bunch of things that you can do, and uh, now that people are uh, hacking your information and everything that uh, you put on the web, uh, we might take some precautions so that you can protect yourself when you're using your smartphone. So I have some things like that. And I also have some new gadgets uh, that I'd like to talk about. I'll show you on the web that are coming out that I think are pretty cool. So let's start the show off by telling everybody uh, how you can watch the Gadget Professor. But obviously you know that because you're watching me. The easiest way, of course, is to go to our website. And that is at thegadgetprofessor.com, thegadgetprofessor.com. And if you scroll down, oh, halfway uh, on the page, you'll see a little thing that says sign up for the newsletter. You definitely want to sign up for the newsletter because that's how you're going to get the show notes. If you don't know what the show notes are, I'm going to tell you. The show notes come out every Thursday evening as soon as the show is posted. And basically what it is, it's going to be an email. I don't send you spam. I don't take your email and sell it to someone else. This is all you know, confidential stuff, and you're going to get the show notes. And what that is is a hot link to every single item that we discussed in the show. You'll have a, a newsletter, and all you do is click on the link that you're interested in, and it will take you right to the website. So there's no need to, uh, to write down this stuff as uh, I'm blabbing away. Uh, you're going to get the show notes if you sign up for them. It's totally free. And then you will uh, basically be in the know, and you'd be amazed. We'll see today how many people actually uh, write to me and say, hey, what about uh, this thing that you said a couple weeks ago? And I, I, I can't remember. So it's good to hold on to the show notes as a reference. Now, you can reach me 24 hours a day, seven days a week at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. That's thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. And I will answer every single email that uh, is sent to me, and I am finally all caught up. In fact, today we're going to review a couple of the more interesting emails that I've got this week. The other thing that you want to do is you want to uh, check out our Facebook page, and I would appreciate it if uh, you like us on the Facebook page. And also, if you follow me on Facebook, you will also be alerted as soon as the episode comes out. And then last but not least, uh, my favorite page is Rebel Mouse. Uh, yes, I am going to have the people from Rebel Mouse on. They are very busy. They have a bunch of new products that are coming out. But in any event, uh, you want to check out our Rebel Mouse page. That's rebelmouse.com forward slash gadget professor. Uh, we tweet, if you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, it would be at Gadget Professor, but uh, we tweet probably 50 to 100 times a day. Uh, you don't have to read every one of them, but uh, what Rebel Mouse does is it takes all those tweets, uh, and they are about all kinds of gadgets and interesting things that are out in the market immediately. Uh, when we find out, we, put it, we tweet about it, and if you go to my Rebel Mouse page, as you'll see here, there is a nice mixture of all kinds of gadgets and technology. Uh, that's available and there's some pretty cool things here and if you check this page uh, every 20 minutes you'll see that it changes and it's always updated so uh, certainly check us out on uh, Rebel Mouse. So uh, last week we had a technical error and uh, uh, I'm not going to put the blame on anybody uh, it's just one of those things that happened but uh, 
Scott uh, Pomeroy, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't think I had that episode posted for more than than 15 seconds, and you uh, graciously emailed me and said, hey, dude, what's going on? So, uh, Scott, thank you very much. Scott emailed me, and it appears that the show was muted from 1.57, that means 1 minute 57, to 3 minutes 54 on the video. Just thought you would want to know. Love your show, Scott. Well, Scott, I love you. Thank you very much for telling me that. Uh, usually, I don't check the episodes out after they're posted. I have technical people that are supposed to do that, but for whatever reason, uh, it didn't happen, and... For that, that night, it was weird. I did check the show, and I suddenly realized that something was wrong. And as soon as I noticed that, I pulled the show off and called up a couple dudes, and they basically re-rasterized the show, and I put it back up. So it is safe and sound, and the sound does work this time. So hopefully we won't have that problem tonight. But, Scott, thank you very much for doing that. That's great, and I appreciate you watching the show. Thank you. Now, crawling right along here. Uh, here's another email that I just got from Donald Morand, and uh, Donald Moran said, I watched your video regarding uh, the uh, uh, Soho, I, I'm, it's not called Soho, let's see here, it is called the Z-Boost Cell Phone Booster, and uh, actually, Donald, I did two episodes on that, the first unit that I did did not work, uh, I'm not sure whether I had a defective unit, but uh, the people at ZBoost called me immediately after the show and said, hey, our, our units work fine. Uh, and you also reviewed an old unit that's three years old. Well, I had the unit uh, for probably four years, and uh, the truth of the matter is uh, it never worked. And I tried it, and yes, I had the extension of 30 feet. I've gotten more email about that ZBoost episode than probably... All the other episodes combined, that's 128 episodes, so uh, that had a far reach, if you will. But, Donald, if you check out, I did review the newer model, and uh, I took the time of going uh, uh, back uh, to find out. And uh, the first one that I did was uh, a while back. It was uh, uh, episode 112. Uh, I did a new one on the uh, Z-Boost Soho YX54 uh, it's mislabeled on the first one. I do have to go back. But if you check episode, Gadget Professor episode 118, you will find out that uh, the new one that was sent to me, the uh, Z-Boost Soho, worked flawlessly, and I highly recommend it. Uh, there is no question that it works. So if you check out the review that I did on uh, Gadget Professor Show 118, you can find that at gadgetprofessor.com. You will see that uh, that Z-Boost worked real well. And uh, here is the uh, website. Uh, www.zboost.com and uh, their tech support is absolutely fabulous. They'll spend as much time as you want on the phone so I could highly recommend them. Now, here's my rant of the day, probably of the year. Uh, I did a review on this. I don't remember what episode it was, but uh, this is a device called NetTalk and uh, this, this boggles my mind. Their website is up and uh, I had the NetTalk Duo, which is right here and uh, I actually hooked that up. It's $49.95 uh, in a, actually in my new uh, Rhode Island residence, and uh, it worked flawlessly. I had no problems with it whatsoever. It was a great price. It was $49. I think I paid $35 at the time. They raised the price to $49, bucks. but that include, uh, it says right here, new unlimited SMS text plan, uh, new call blocking, block annoying calls, blah, blah, blah. You can call anywhere in the United States and Canada for free. And if you want to renew the service, it's like 20 bucks a year, give or take a penny or whatever. Long story short, uh, my number now is dead. So if you call that number in Rhode Island, it just gets a, a busy signal. And uh, some gentleman emailed me and said, uh, Gadget Professor, I'm 99% sure that... Uh, uh, Net Talk and the Net Talk Duo are no longer in business, so I found that odd because I had no no email from them. So I actually uh, try to call them several times. I get no one on the phone that answers, which is very disturbing. I uh, used to, and uh, also their website's still up. So I'm not sure what's going on. I googled it. I didn't see anywhere where they said they went out of business. Although maybe I'm not looking in the right place. Maybe I'm missing something. If you guys out there or ladies know something, I don't know, email me, thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com, because I don't know what's going on. Uh, tomorrow I will remotely reset my modem in uh, Rhode Island and see if I can bring the uh, uh, net talk back, back uh, to life. But right now, I think you're right. I think they are out of business, and uh, I will try once again. 
I haven't spent a lot of time, but I called them two or three times and uh, basically didn't get anywhere. So I will check it out and keep you posted on that. And uh, I know I'm not alone. There are hundreds of thousands of people who uh, who bought this unit, and I don't know why their website's up. I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, by next week, uh, I will have the answer. Now, rolling right along in the holiday spirit because it's uh, Thanksgiving, which is my favorite holiday, just around the corner. And uh, then we have uh, Hanukkah and Christmas. Actually, uh, uh, Hanukkah this year falls on uh, Thanksgiving, and I, I don't ever remember that happening, so I can celebrate two of my favorite holidays that day. In any event, uh, our friends at Amazon have raised the floor to $35 in spending to get free shipping. Uh, nice guy, nice work, guys. Right before the holidays, uh, uh, they, they took it upon them to uh, essentially... Uh, uh, raise the the ceiling. So online the online retailer Amazon raised the minimum order size needed for free shipping to thirty five dollars from twenty five dollars. This change comes ahead of the busy holiday shopping season. After Walmart.com made a similar change early this month, Amazon is pushing customers to sign up for its Amazon Prime service, which costs seventy nine dollars a year. Uh, members receive free two day shipping on millions of items on the website, as well as access, access to its free streaming video service for TV shows and movies. Now, I have been a Prime member of Amazon for uh, about three years, and I, I must admit, uh, just in shipping costs and expediting the orders and having free shipping alone, it's worth the $79 if you buy a lot of things, which I do for my business. Uh, second of all... Uh, the uh, free streaming of the movies and TV shows is, is fantastic. It's fabulous, especially if you have the Roku box. So it's not a bad deal. And as far as raising free shipping from 25 to 35 bucks, I really can't blame them because shipping is uh, quite expensive. So uh, Amazon, in my opinion, is a really well-run company. I've never had any issues with anything I bought from them and everything that I've returned or needed to return. Uh, they paid for the shipping back. Uh, they, they they just run a superb operation as far as I'm concerned. So I really can't beat them over the head for raising it uh, from $25 to $35 for, uh, for free shipping. So uh, enough said on that. Now, I frequently, frequently I'm getting emails as uh, asking me what service do I recommend if you want to put up a website. And uh, over the last year or two, I've mentioned several different types of companies and services that uh, are out there that are reliable and won't go out of business. But uh, for the most part, uh, if I had to recommend a company, uh, it would be Squarespace. Uh, they make it real easy, real easy to, uh, to get in there and uh, create a website probably in 10 minutes or so. And uh, I, I recommend them. And uh, I think their cheapest service is uh, 8 bucks a month. Uh, if you pay uh, by the year, and it's 10 bucks a month, I think, if you just want to go month to month. But if you really don't know a lot about creating a website and uh, just want something that's real easy to use and doesn't cost a heck of a lot of money uh, and you want help doing it, uh, really, uh, it's going to be tough to, uh, to get anything better than Squarespace. So uh, check them out, and uh, hopefully you will like that. And now for some new gadget that just came out this week. Uh, I often talk about the Wi-Fi card. My biggest beef with them is their cards, their SD cards for your cameras, are always quite small. And I use a 64 uh, gigabyte card, and uh, they always had 16. And I just got an email today from the company uh, that uh, now they have a 32 gigabyte Wi-Fi card. It's called the Mobi 32 gig. It is outrageously expensive uh, it's ninety nine dollars call it a hundred bucks uh, you get a free 8x10 framed canvas print from click photos with the purchase of the Mobi uh, 32 gigabyte card so it's not that bad I guess you get some value out of there but uh, feature wise uh, this uh, Wi-Fi this smart card will actually transfer uh, to smartphones, to tablets, and computers. It will store 8,000 photographs or six hours of video. That's pretty good. So uh, I have about three or four of these cars. I don't have any that's, that are 32 gigabyte. I probably will spring for that, but uh, they do a lot of cool things. Uh, let's see if we can get the Mobi up here to take a closer look. 
at the uh, i5 features. Uh, your best shots now mobile. Mobi instantly delivers your best photos and videos from your camera uh, to your smartphone or tablet. No wires needed. You just use, uh, and actually it says no wireless network required. Mobi creates its own Wi-Fi so it works wherever you are. So that's pretty cool. You don't have to have Wi-Fi now. It has its own Wi-Fi built into it. I like that a lot. It's simple to set up. It's simple to use. Just install the free iFi app on your smartphone or your tablet and connect the card. Uh, once part or paired, uh, the card transfers photos and videos whenever new content is detected by your device. And once the transfer is complete, the card disconnects its Wi-Fi to save your battery. Obviously, it's going to chew up the battery. Uh, Smartphones fall short for life's many moments that require zooming, high-speed shooting, low light, and other features that make digital cameras superior. Uh, Mobi provides photo lovers with no compromise solutions. Uh, great quality, great, uh, great pictures and photos, also video, pictures and photos are the same thing, of digital cameras, instant access to the smartphone, enjoy, and you can share it on Instagram and uh, Facebook. So check that out. Uh, it makes a fantastic gift, uh, especially if someone's going off to college or a birthday or whatever. Uh, basically, you're going to stick this card into your digital camera and it's automatically going to transfer the photos to wherever you tell it to transfer them to. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And now what I'd like to do is to talk a little bit about keeping your smartphone secure. And uh, there are three or four things that I, I, I really think you should do, and we're going to talk about them. Uh, the first one would be to lock your smartphone, put a lock on it, in other words, a password, so that the only one that can get in there is you or someone that you trust to get in the phone. So if you do lose it, uh, immediately you got step one, that they can't get into it because it's password locked. So a lot of people have smartphones, and I never locked mine until uh, until recently, and now I have a password on it. So uh, you're not going to get into my smartphone. You wouldn't want to get into it anyway uh, because I have a password on it. So that that's basic. It's simple to do, and it's free to do. And uh, uh, with with the security issues that we're having on the Internet today and, and identity theft, uh, do yourself a favor and put a, a password lock on the phone. It's very simple to do. Go in your menus and you'll see a, a way, whatever kind of smartphone you have, there's, there's a, the ability to put a password lock on it. The second thing that you want to do is uh, you want to make sure, I have this written down so I don't miss anything, uh, you want to make sure that you're not installing what's called tracking apps. And we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the other thing that you want to do is you want to put some type of uh, app on your phone, and there's a ton of them that are free, that if you should lose your phone, it's going to track where it is. And if you're on the Droid, you can put on Where's My Droid? And also, if you're on the iPhone, uh, you can put in Find My iPhone. So those are two things that I think you should definitely do right off the bat is lock your phone and put uh, uh, a tracing app on your phone so that if you should lose it, uh, at least you'll be able to track where it is. You may not get it back, but at least if it's at a restaurant or something, you'll know where it is. Now, I just mentioned that uh, there's there's tracking apps. So you got to be careful what you install uh, and where you surf, even on your smartphone. Now, here's a real interesting app. And uh, the term is called TOS, which is really Terms of Service. And a lot of people don't realize that when you put apps on your cell phone and or your computer, for that matter, uh, you've heard perhaps of the software, but you don't realize how much they're actually taking of your personal data. Uh, Facebook comes to mind. And the... Uh, uh, terms of service agreement are, are a, a, a norm for pretty much every app that's out there, end of story. Even when you buy software, uh, whether it's Microsoft Windows 7 or uh, the, the Mac operating system, iOS, whatever it may be, uh, there is an operating uh, system agreement that uh, inherently you agree to use this software before you can load it, and it's, it happens all the time. Now, most of us, in fact, probably all of us, uh, even if you're a lawyer dude out there, you're not going to read the terms of service uh, for a variety of reasons. One, you don't want to waste the time. Two, you don't understand half of it anyway. And three, there's probably uh, 3,000 pages of the terms of service. So 
Here's a piece of software called Terms of Service Didn't Read. I have read and agreed to the terms. Uh, this is the last thing that you have to do before that software loads or that app loads. So you're going to agree to the terms. It says right here, this is the biggest lie on the web. And this company is going to fix that. So we are a user rights initiative and rate and label website items and privacy policies from very good, which would be class A, to very bad, which would be class E. The terms of service are often too long to be read but it's important to understand what's in them and this is the truth your rights online depend upon them we hope that our ratings can help you get informed about your rights do not hesitate on a, to click on the service below to have more details you can also get ratings directly on your browser by install, installing this web app so obviously I'm on a browser right now and I've actually installed this app and let's take a quick look at what this does now this Let's keep in mind that class A is very good and very bad as class E. So class B is not as good as class A and obviously class E is the worst. So the uh, A is the best, E is the worst. They have taken the time to actually classify how the privacy policies and the what I'll call data sucking, data mining is a true word, uh, what happens behind the scenes. You all heard of Google they're rated class C not an A not a B C and this tells you right up front Google keeps your searches forever Google knows every single thing that you searched and that's called data mining and that's the way it works man nothing you can do about it Google can use your content for all their existing and future services that's right this service tracks you on other websites as well Google can share your personal information with other parties and there's no promise to inform you about the data requests from the governments. And you can click on this. I'm going to cough and I got a little cough button here. Hold on. <coughs> hey, that worked. Okay, so you can click on the details and get more things that it will do. Now, YouTube is class D, A, B, C, D. That's even more intrusive than Google. Terms may be changed at any time at their discretion without notice to the user. They can remove your content at any time without prior notice. The copyright license is broader than necessary. Reduction of legal period for cause of action. Deleted videos are not really deleted. That's something interesting. So this actually goes and gives you, uh, here's a class E, TwitPic. TwitPic takes credit for your content. That's, I didn't even know that. Your content is for TwicPic and their partners. That's great. Reduction of legal period for cause of action. And you, you act, when you click that button, I agree, this is what you're agreeing to. You indemnify TwicPic from any claim related to your content, and deleted images are not really deleted. In other words, TwicPic always has them, and that's rated Class E. So you can uh, browse through this. And the other thing that's very cool about this uh, terms of service um, app is that you can put it on your browser so as you're surfing through the web on your computer uh, you'll actually have a bar flash up that shows you green or red and they color code uh, each each class if you will so that you can just you know it will say class E or class A or whatever but it's also color coded so this software is free and it's very cool and I've been using it now for probably three or four days and here's your color codes you can see the color codes that they actually use and uh, I, I really like it and recommend it and it's something I think you should look at and uh, it's at tosdr.org and this will be in the show notes so check that out it's 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 really pretty cool that will wrap it up for today's show. I'm sorry I didn't have a gadget, but uh, I have three or four things in the works right now, so we'll certainly have one next week. And uh, I did want to catch up and thank some people uh, for emailing me. And again, you can reach me anytime at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. I enjoyed bringing it to you, and I will see everybody next Thursday. So long from The Gadget Professor. The Gadget Professor is produced by Don Bain. Multimedia Communications, LLC. If you would like your product reviewed on The Gadget Professor or would like to appear on The Gadget Professor, contact us via email at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. The opinions expressed on the program by the host, guests, 
call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. And thank you for watching The Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor.